Hey guys, I know I've been missing in action. I'm so sorry. I've been dealing with a lot of things and at this point, I'm gonna give you guys some updates. <laughs> so, do you guys remember when I sent the negotiable instrument into uh, the apartment complex back in November, November of, uh, November 27th of last. Well, they said that they got it and they said that it was deposited and I was so excited. Remember I told you guys, I gave you updates on, um, like the front office saying that, Hey, like we got it. It's, it's been accepted. It's been deposited. Cause I went down there and asked them for, um, a receipt and they kept kind of pushing it off and saying like they, they couldn't give me a receipt yet. They needed to wait for corporate, all the things. So what I found out even in that is it takes 45 days to mature, right? After it matures, then they can actually trade it on the stock markets and do all the things nefarious with it. So after that 43 days, then they, they ended up the lady at the front desk was like, you need to, you know, make another one. They don't have it, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, okay, yes, they do. Because I know, and you guys know, if you've watched my channel for a while, I know that they can take my security and trade it on the first and secondary market. I'm like, okay, well, um, then they told me, you know, create another one, make another one and, you know, bring it up here. And I said, well, I said, she said, well, why? why did you take it to, like, why did you send it to corporate? And I said, well, because you guys wouldn't know what to do with it. You know, I said, right now, if I handed you a bill of exchange or a negotiable instrument, what would you do with it? And she said, I would take it up to the bank and deposit it. And I'm like, wrong. <laughs> no, that's not how that works. You're going to have to get with a broker to be able to, you know, transfer it, like a transfer agent or something like that. Well, so, gosh, it's been such a, a, just it's been crazy so then I created another one and sent it in um, the lady at the front office came by the door and put an eviction notice on my door and now mind you I've already sent in one and I know that it was accepted and deposited and all the things but I left out a very vital a vital step that I just recently learned and I feel like it's it it helps because here's my thought I always wondered if I send them in a paper how do I know how do I know if it is deposited I have to go off of hearsay or how do I know what they've done with it like they could be trading it they could do whatever but I just came across a content creator her name is Christina Wilson she is on YouTube and then she's also on TikTok. If you guys look her up, it's Christina Wilson Estates and Trust, I think. And um, she, when I listened to that video, I was just like, oh my God, that, that has to be it. So she put registered mail sticker label on it. And I thought, there you go. That's how I, I'm able to kind of track it or see what they're doing with it or anything like that, right? So... Go back to what I was saying earlier. So I sent the first one. They said it was deposited. They said that all the things, which I, th I think it's total lies. But then they I ended up writing up another one. Same amount. It was like $27,000. Um, I have now paid in uh, almost $60,000 into this rent. Or not dollars, but in securities. And so I sent in the second one. And it was delivered. But the thing is, is that it was, it was handed, it was handed to the, the lady up at corporate, right? It wasn't signed for. So that's even like postal fraud, I guess. But so I've sent in my second one. The lady at the front desk here locally said that they didn't get it. Although my side is saying that it's been delivered. So now we're kind of going back and forth. I don't know if you guys saw my, my video on my, on my TikTok where I had that interaction with her and something just said to me, you need to record this. You need to record this. So I did and I caught her in several, several lies, which again, I don't understand why people lie so much. It's like, do you not think that there, somebody's gonna find out that you're lying or do you not feel or even, do, are you just a liar? You know, where you don't even care about the repercussions of your lie? Like, geez, well, 
after she said that she that they didn't receive it, although again on my side it said that it was received, it was delivered. I went ahead and did it Christina Wilson's way, where I drew up another instrument and I put the registered sticker mail on the front of it, and then well, it was a certified, it was the green one. I put it on the front of the the instrument, and then I sent it off. Well, on the outside the envelope, I put uh, registered, right? So on the inside of the envelope, it's certified, but then on the outside of the envelope, it's it's registered. So now I've sent in three. This is 60,000 in negotiable instruments. Um, I haven't heard anything else. At this point, they did put a an eviction notice on my door and they gave me like 30 days to come up with another one and I did and I sent it in and um, I haven't heard anything back from them. I have not heard anything back from them, which is good, but then it kind of makes me ee, like, I'm like, oh shit. But here's the thing, y'all. If y'all have been following me on my journey, I have to learn to stand up for myself and I have to learn to stand on my square. You know, like I could learn all of this and that's great, but I have to learn to stand on my square and then pivot if something else happens. Hey, Tracy. So, that's where I'm at with the negotiable instruments and that kind of thing as far as like paying for my rent. Now, as far as my bill side of it, my bill side of it, now the, the only bills that I have is Verizon, Cox Communication, and Florida Light and Power. Now, let me show you what the IRS has sent me and here's what I've done. I've sent in so many forms to the IRS saying that um, you know, I want to claim my estate and, um, you know, bring down the national debt. So the first couple ones that I was getting was actually per my social security number. So at the bottom of this, if you can see this, see how it has like a little skew right here? Well, I'm making these into checks. It's called the bill of exchange, right? So I'm using this as a template and I'll write, pay to the order of the United States Treasury, right? And then I make a little box over here. Say it's $1,000. So say it's Verizon and I want to pay for the year or whatever. Just go with me on the numbers. So it's $1,000. I would write it over here, $1,000. In my note, my letter of instruction, I would also write like, hey, here's how much I usually pay monthly, but here's how much I'm going to pay today. It's going to be for the full year. Um, I would put that over here, Okay. And then same thing, say it's $1,000, I would come over here and write $1,000. And then down here, wait, yeah, down here, I would write, you know, sign it as I would with a, like a check, okay? Just like a check. I'm using this template just like a check. And then I send it back into them. And my, my lights are on, my phone still works, all the things. Those three bills are, are done. Like, I, I don't... I don't pay those bills in fiat anymore. I'm not making that, you know, like payment anymore. Now, this one came to me the other day, which is interesting because this was a new kind of, um, the first one was per my social, but then this one is for my estate and trust because I had it reclassified, like a reclassification. Um, it's my estate and then care of my trust. So the maker number at the bottom here is slightly different than the maker number here, right? But if you guys notice, if you guys get these, here's the, you're gonna see you're gonna see 670, and I looked it up 670 right here. That's a treasury bond, and you can find that if you look it on like IRS, you can look up all this kind of stuff. It's a treasury bond, so I'm like, okay, you're pulling from my bonds. So same, same, I use this as a check. I create my own instruments. So I'm using this to pay my bill, right? Now, as far as the remittance, you don't necessarily need these from the IRS. You can also use your actual Verizon bill. So let's go back. Let, let me do a little happy guy, a little happy guy. Okay, so let's say that this is your Verizon bill, right? At the bottom of it, let me do this, hold on. Okay, let's say this is your Verizon bill, right? This top portion of it is a bond. This bottom portion of it is the remittance coupon. It's a, it's a security, right? You're going to create this, 
this bottom portion of your, your bill into a money order, okay? You may see like Verizon and then your name and then like maybe the maker number is gonna have like your um, account number and all, like all your things, right? Turn this bottom portion of your bill into a remittance, into your remittance coupon. You have security in this. What you're seeing is not a balance. If you look at your bill, say, say it has, um, say, say your Verizon bill is like $300, right? That's a positive number. It's not a negative number. It's positive. So you're saying, hey, I accept that. Thank you for paying that because per um, 31 USC 3123 and then HJR 192 and then also, what's the other one? 18 USC 8, all bills are prepaid right? So you're using, say this is a Verizon bill, you're going to use this as your um, template to be able to pay for that Verizon bill, right? Same, same, pay to the order of, I would write, I don't use them anymore, so now I'm kind of like, who would I pay to the order of? I'm trying to think of what I used before, hold on, pay to the order of, is it myself? Don't quote me on that. Don't quote me on that. I don't want to say because now I'm kind of like, I don't want to. So, hold on. Pay to the order of, it wouldn't be me. But are you sending it to the IRS? Meh, my brain just glitched. But you're still filling it out like, say say it's $1,000. You would do, do a little box right here. Do I have one? I haven't paid my bills since uh, December. Um, so say it's $1,000, then I would fill it out $1,000 and then sign it, right? Let me get back to you on who I would actually put it in if it was actually a Verizon bill. Somebody that you can look into is, her name is Christina, K-R-I-S-T-I-N-A. Last name is Wilson and then look up Estate and Trust. So Christina Wilson Estate and Trust on YouTube. Now she follows she follows Patrick Devine, okay? That's Robots and Patriots. If you look online, it's Robots and Patriots um, on YouTube. I'm trying to think now. I'm like, damn, my brain just glitched. Um, but that's how you would pay your bills. That you're, you're, you're accepting for value what was given to you. But if you look at your statement, there's not going to be any negatives. It's, it's positive amounts because all your stuff is paid, right? So let's go into even like the timeline of the apartment complex because i i'm gonna have to open a federal case with them which i don't really want to do because i feel like it's super stressful but all of the correspondence that i have done with them back and forth back and forth what happened was marcus marcus messed up marcus was also fired so he told me that my security because even even your verizon bill with the bottom that's a security that's a security and um, he told me that my security was um, shredded by the bank. So he's speaking on the bank's behalf. I actually should, I actually should probably contact the bank to see like what their thoughts are on it. But that was a hundred thousand dollar fine. That was a hundred thousand dollar fine per my fee schedule. And that's what I'm saying, you guys. Do your fee schedule, and um, you know that'll that'll kind of back you on when you're dealing with these bigger corporations because they're not going to want to just go, oh yeah, we're gonna do that for you. You know, they're not gonna wanna do that at all. So just make sure that when you start to kind of stand up for yourself and when you're starting to like really like push back and say, hey, like I know my rights and I know like I know the law now, so expect them to push back to you but if you already have your fee schedule in place then like here's my first one is closing an account with without agreement from consumer that's a million dollars so say i start to battle with bank of america if i'm battling with them they could be like oh screw her close her account okay well do you want to do that do you want to do that because then if i open a federal case that's a million dollar fine a violation that now you have crossed right so or broken so I would say put your fee schedule together first and then, you know, then start to battle. But when you start to battle, then I would add the fee schedule in there too. 
you know, like, hey, this is what I'm doing, and this is, you know, I realized this, and da 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 here's my fee schedule if you want to fuck around and find out. It's okay, you can do that. Um, but that has helped me in my process because as soon as I send that, it kind of sends a little bit like, it sends a message of I'm not kidding, you know, and when Marcus shredded my security, I sent th that in to him. I, I printed off two and I sent in one to Marcus and then I also sent one up to corporate and then Marcus was fired um, because he told me that they shredded the bank and that is shredding or otherwise destroying a coupon or a payment is $100,000. So he just cost the company $100,000 for emailing me that. Which whenever he spoke to me, once he spoke to me about it, I was like, ooh, can you send that to me in, e in an email? I would love to have that. Love to, <laughs> let's, le I want to have that. Um, so at this point, I'm still going back and forth with them. Um, I haven't had an eviction notice as far as something legal. Uh, the front desk just brought up like a piece of paper, shoved it in my door. Um, but even with that, hold please, even with that, that's on my fee schedule too. So go ahead and fuck around. Um, number 21, any eviction process is $250,000 because I know that whenever I signed the contract with the apartment complex, I have securities interest in it per my signature. So you can't evict me now, you know, and then I ended up even putting a lien on the apartment because I do have securities interest in it. So this fee schedule to me is important. Right. It's going to tell them that you're you're not kidding. But then it's also going to tell them that like, hey, you're, you're breaking all of these violations. These are violations. You're harming me. You're injuring me. Right. So any eviction process was two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, which that should actually be added in there too. Um, refu refusal to discharge the debt, which is a violation of UCC three dash six oh three is a million dollars. So if they get my, which they did because it was delivered, but when they get it, if they, if they refuse to discharge the debt, meaning to set off my, my rent for the year, because my letter of instruction was from December to December, right? December of last to December of this next. But now that I've sent in three negotiable instruments, I'm also going to ask to stay here for three years. Like I'm going to stay here for three years and you guys leave me alone because clearly like I've caught them in lies. Uh, um, even Taylor, the one girl, she's an assistant manager and she's actually the one that told me that they have it and they accepted it and it was deposited. And then they came back and say, no, it, did, it wasn't deposited. The bank has it. They shredded it. Uh, da, 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 da. But see, now we know if you've been studying this long enough, we know that the bank didn't shred it. The bank did not trade it. The bank is actually trading it on the first and secondary market at this point, you know, but the bank is not going to tell us that they're going to tell Marcus that, you know, oh, they shredded. Well, I don't even think the bank would tell Marcus that they shredded it because that's securities fraud, you know, so, um, but I just wanted to give you guys an update. I haven't been like served as far as like, um, a actual court where I'll have a hearing and things like that. Because I have put together so much information, like all the documents, that the correspondence between us, even whenever I, um, you know, found this place, I was still in Georgia and I wanted to be able to, like, I wrote them and I was like, hey, I'm going to be down there in September. I want to go ahead and pay through my, my securities. Like, I don't want to pay with fiat. You know, I'd like to do this on the private side. And obviously the acquiescence, they, they didn't respond. And then I did it again. So I ended up contacting them three times and they, they are not even getting back to me. The people that I'm actually talking to are on local level and they don't know shit about this. So it's really hard to try to speak corporate language with local people. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not trying to belittle them. They're doing a great job at their job, doing great. Um, but Honestly, I need to be able to talk to corporate about this kind of stuff. So all of my correspondence with that has been through mail, um, certified mail. Make sure it's certified because you want to get that postal rule in there. Um, that way, if they do do anything that's fraudulent or whatever, then now you can take it up with the postal office, which is interesting because not only now that I have, I have them on securities fraud, I have them on postal fraud, um, 
that those are two of the like really big ones, but I'm sure they're just violating, violating. So I'm just, I'm kind of waiting to see what they're going to do because if they do serve me like actual eviction notice, cause, um, then I'll have to appeal it. Uh, you know, and, and after that video of me and the new manager, which is interesting to me cause she's kept saying, you know, I told you several times that we only need to be talking through email. And I'm like, bitch, I met you yesterday. I haven't even spoke to you. I met you yesterday. You're lying. And that's number one thing that I cannot stand as a liar. Why lie? What, what are you hiding? You know? So, um, it's just, it's, it's a great time to be alive, but this is teaching me so much to be able to stand on my square. And obviously if you guys have followed me, I did not have boundaries. I let people walk over me. And now in this era, era in 2024, I'm really trying to hold my boundaries, stand on my square and, you know, push back, just not let people just walk the fuck over me. And it's hard sometimes because, you know, I just want to ball up into a ball and cry, but can't do that. Can't do that. I got to get stronger. Um, so I'll let you guys know when or if, if they actually serve me. I don't know if corporate's going to be like, look, leave her alone. <laughs> we owe her $2 million right now. Let's leave her alone. Okay. Leave her alone. Um, you know, and then I have $60,000 in securities that now has been, you know, paid, sent in. And so I don't know. But this is me standing on my square up. It is kind of, it kind of makes me nervous a little bit. But uh, yeah, so I love you guys. I wanted to keep this short and sweet just to let you guys know. Also, get a firm mailing book. You guys can get these at the bank. No, not at the bank, at the post office. And it's an accounting book. So if somebody asks you, well, what do you need that for? Say it's for accounting. You know, you don't have to tell them what it is actually, you know, it's for accounting, you know. Um, and then as you do anything, just write it, write it in there. Make sure that you're keeping copies. Anything that you do, green card. There's your little hoorah. Make sure everything is there. Because here's the other thing. This is also going has helped me. Because I sent stuff into, like I reported the apartment complex to the FTC, FTC, CFPB, the IRS. I sent um, a 3949A and a 211 to the IRS to audit them. Um, who else? Attorney General. It's like five or six people that I've, I've sent in because of all the fraud and violations and stuff that they've, they've done, um, to me. That's why I'm kind of hoping they will, they'll just leave me alone. Oh, that's what I was going to say. So after, after that conversation with the leasing manager, where she's like, I'm going to get you for criminal trespassing. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> we're going to see, because I'm going to look that up. And if you fuck that up and you're just talking out of your ass and I'm going to add that to the list, you know, um, but I ended up calling the cops when, when I got home, just a non, non-emergency because I just wanted to make, I need records, right? You need a paper trail. And, um, so I called the, the officer in, he came to the apartment and I told him that, Hey, I've already done this. I showed him proof. I showed him proof on the, the website that the security was actually delivered. Um, I, I wanted to prove my side too, because I know that they have like their little camera and that'll also come in to play if I have to go to court, which will end up being federal court because it's over a certain amount. I think like state court is one thing, has to be like a certain amount, but then federal court, it's like, it's over $2 million in, in violations at this point. So, um, but then I sent it to Attorney General uh, Ashley Moody down here and the IRS, I, I, I mean, shit, Th this case has, this case has made me learn a lot too, because I'm, I'm able to kind of get my brain together because worst case scenario, if need be, I could go down to the office right now and swipe my card and be up to date on my rent, but I've already paid them $60,000. So why would I even do that? You know, why, why would I then go back and then like pay them again? You know, like that's, that's dumb to me. So, um, yeah, so that's about it. And then even this morning, this morning, I noticed that my ex has docked my al alimony again. I'm like, oh, such a, 
Yeah, so I'm going to have to open another case with him. I'm going to have to go to, like, garnishment and that kind of thing. But even with that, like, he's retired, so I don't know how that works. Uh, but, yeah, he's fucking with me again. Are we shocked? Nah, we're not shocked. So, but it's making me stronger. You know, it's, it's making me have to use my brain to figure out things because I'm not hiring an attorney. I don't want to hire an attorney because they're not really actually working for me. I feel like I could get more done if I do it versus if I would hire somebody. But yeah, so we'll see. We'll see. But you guys, I love you and I hope you have a good day and I will always meet you on the flip side.